Okay, so our topic today will be about retaining walls. As you know, retaining wall, this is a retaining wall, is used to retain, retain soil behind uh, the wall so that we can have two different levels. So this level, high level, and you have here lower level. So the retaining wall will retain the soil of the high level. Okay, and if you remember from last week, so we have some earth retaining structures. Last week, we talked about slopes, which can be embankment or cutting. So we can have embankment like that. So we have slope, and it can be also cutting. So this is our slope, okay. Today, or this week, we will be talking about retaining gold, something similar to the left uh, image here. So as you can see, this is our retaining gold, and this is a high soil level, and here is a lower soil level. Okay, uh, the idea here, why we need to, or when we need to, uh, do a retaining wall instead of a slope. Okay, so the idea behind the retaining wall is when we don't have enough space to create a slope. Because retaining wall is more expensive because it has, it needs to be uh, designed and it will be from a stronger material, for example, concrete or rock and so on. So the retaining wall will be expensive. So we need to do uh, the retaining wall in special cases when we don't have enough space to make slopes. Okay. For example, here in this example, if you want to make a slope, so this will make us waste uh, a part uh, from the road here. As you can see, we have a road. So we don't have enough space to create a slope. So the retaining wall will be the best to use. So slope is not feasible here in this case. Okay. So this is the idea behind the retaining wall. And these are some uh, retaining walls type. The first type or the first uh, kind of walls we can see is landscaping wall so this can be in the residential buildings or residential areas around us so this is an example here as you can see the retain the retained soil in this uh, type of soil is low amount of retained soil so it is not that uh, complicated to design this also, as you can see, this is the height of soil that is need to be retained. Okay, and this is also another example of retain retaining walls. So all these retaining walls are simple ones. Because it retain low height of soil or low amount of soil okay so another type of retaining walls which is more complicated or more uh, complicated in design and need to be careful when you are designing this type of soil which is bridge abutment so as you can see, the bridge abutment, something like that, and it will retain huge amount of soil. Huge amount of retained soil behind this wall. So this wall will be very critical in design. 
because if this wall failed, failure of this wall will cause uh, catastrophic. Okay, so the failure of this wall is very dangerous, so we need to be careful when we are designing this wall. And this is also another example of bridge abutment during construction. Okay, so this is two types of retaining wall, bridge abutments and uh, residential or small walls. And we have another type of retaining wall we can see around us is basement walls. As you know, for basement, we need to dig soil very deep to make like uh, car parks or whatever is the use of this, like uh, some, some shopping centers has also like three or four basements. So we need to dig very deep in soil. So as you know, to retain this soil, we need to have like type of walls, which is called basement walls. And it's also considered as a retaining wall. So this is our floor as well of the basement. So they can reuse, they can use this space for like parking or, <coughs> or stores or so on. Also here, the height of this basement is high or big height or large height of soil. So <clears throat> again, the bridges or the soil retained behind this uh, wall are high bridges or high loads. So I need to be careful when we are designing this type of walls. So as you can see, here is some basement walls. And here as well. So this is the basement wall height. And after they finish the construction of the basement wall, so they will fill the surrounding area with soil and then start constructing the superstructure part. Okay, so these are three types of, of uh, walls. And also, the first one is dams or dam wall. Dams also can be considered as a retaining wall, but it doesn't retain soil, it retains water. So dam is considered as a retaining wall. Because it's same design, but just as the soil, uh, the material retained behind is different. So it is considered as a retaining wall, retain the water. So the idea here is this, uh, the wall is retaining water, not soil. <clears throat> so if we have a look here to this dam, so this dam is called the whispering walls in Barosa Reservoir. So the dam is like very high wall, like that. So this is the wall cross section. And as you can see, here we have the water in this side. And for example, if this is the dips, so we have the water is are pushing, the water is pushing the wall in this direction. So again, this dam or this whispering wall dam is retaining the water. And again, <clears throat> this type of structure or the dams is very critical in design. Because failure of this dam, failure will cause, in this case, the water, because the water 
is like liquid, so the water will move very fast and will cause floods and uh, other damage and the damage to the surroundings. So the design of the retaining wall should be very careful and should be uh, with high factor of safety to consider all this uh, danger or hazards. Okay. So these are the types of retaining wall we can have. So again, just quickly, we have the small uh, walls for landscaping, which is around us in residential areas. We have bridge abutments, which is the walls be, uh, underneath the uh, bridge. So this wall has two, uh, actually has two, like for example, this one here. Yeah. This is our retaining wall. So this retaining wall has two uh, jobs or two uh, rules. The first rule is supporting the bridge. That's why it's called bridge abutment. And also it retain the soil from this side. So this type of walls is, is doing two jobs, retaining soil and support the bridge. Okay, and the third one is basement walls. The fourth one is dam, but the idea that dam is retaining water, not retaining soil. Okay, so this is the type, these are the type of uh, walls. And now we need to know what are the like, uh, loads or region acting on retaining walls. Okay, and for your information, we don't have any calculations in this part. Because it is a little a bit complicated. So we just need to know the concepts in this topic. Okay. So just need to know the concept and what is what is the idea behind um making the retaining wall and what are the loads applied on the retaining walls yeah. uh do you have any question dylan i think we have dinoka with us hello dinoka do you have any question Okay, thank you, Dinoka. Okay, so now we go to the training of the loads or the pressure on the retaining wall. And the first pressure we have is the lateral air separation. Okay, so if we look at this diagram here to see what happened. Uh, from soil towards the retaining wall. So if we have this soil height, this soil block, okay, and we have the weights of this soil, and if we have any applied load on top, so we have gravity loads, okay. What happened to this soil? This soil try to or this pressure try to move in this direction and push the soil in this direction because it cannot move in this direction because we have already soil underneath here. So the only space to go is to the side. So the soil will try to move in this direction. Okay, and this movement will cause this type of pressure on the retaining wall. Okay, because when you go deeper in soil, this pressure, the pressure increase. 
Okay, so the wall has pressure from the soil in this direction, and the wall itself trying to push the soil in the other direction. So this is the reaction on the wall. Okay, so the blue is the pressure from soil and the orange is the reaction from the wall towards the soil. Okay, and the main thing we need to know here is when we go deeper in soil, this pressure increase. Okay. That's why when we have higher walls, we have more pressure and we need to be more careful when we are designing uh, the walls. Okay. So, How can we like uh, know the lateral air pressure on the wall? So we have some parameters we need to know. So for the lateral air pressure from the previous slide, we know that if this is our wall and this is the soil, so the wall will be under this type or this sort of pressure or earth pressure. Again, actually, let's just try to. This is the reaction from the wall. So actually, the pressure will be the pressure from soil will be this diagram. So this is the lateral earth pressure on the wall okay so the lateral earth pressure on the wall depends on relative movement between the soil and the wall so we have some or few different cases for the lateral earth pressure depending on the movement of the soil and the wall Okay, so these cases are three. We have two, one, two, three. The first one is active case, at rest case, and passive case. What this mean? This means that active is defined as when the soil pushing the wall and the wall is moving away. Okay, so I just... Uh, Maybe do it here. Okay, so we have the first case active. The active means the soil is pushing the wall in this direction. So this is called active case. The second case is passive. Or the third case is passive, just to show the difference, because this is the main the main uh, part. So the passive case means the wall is moving into the soil. So the passive movement is in this direction when the wall itself moves towards the soil. So this is called passive pressure or passive case. Okay, the intermediate case when the soil is at rest. This means that the active pressure 
and the passive pressure are same so they are omitting each other so this two cases are equal so this is case is called at rest case so we have three cases the first case active and passive and in between is at rest okay so if we go to the definitions again active soil is soil pushing the wall away passive means the wall is moving towards the soil at rest means there is no movement okay if we look at the arrows here on this diagram so as you can see this is the soil we have so this is the active case active pressure case and this is the passive case because when you put the retaining wall so there is some uh, earth pressure from the other side which is pushing the wall in the reverse side so we have active and passive so if the red pressure more than the green is active if the green more than the red it is passive and if they are equal so it is at rest okay so if we look at the design as you know in the design we have factor of safety when you are designing or fos so as you can see here the passive case is the most critical case because the forces in this case will be uh, higher so at passive case is most most uh, most uh, critical one at least the case is less critical and the least critical is the active case so the factor of safety in the passive case higher than at least than at active case Okay, so this is the three cases of uh, earth pressure or the pressure on walls we have, passive, active, and at rest. And as you can as you can see here, the magnet the magnitude of the pressure depend on the soil properties and vertical axis. Uh, vertical stresses okay so the pressures on the soil depend on two parameter or two uh, parameters the soil probabilities and the vertical stresses what are the soil probabilities if you remember from previous lectures for example the cohesion c and the friction angle phi Okay, so this also can uh, be one of the questions in the exam. For example, if I ask you to define the lateral acid pressure cases on the retaining wall, so you need to draw, for example, something like these three diagrams and define the active case. So it means the soil pushing the wall. At least the case means there is no movement of soil relative to the wall. And the third is passive case where the wall is moving into the soil okay do you have any question guys about the cases of uh, lateral pressure so now we go, go into the types of earth uh, or retaining walls what are the type of retaining wall we have gravity retaining wall cantilever retaining walls and embedded retaining wall or sheet by walls okay these three are very important to us in the course so we will uh, like uh, go in more details in them and this one is less important but it's also need to know it uh, which is called re reinforced retaining walls okay so let's start discussing the first three one, two, three. So the first type is the gravity retaining wall, which was the, which was 
the like typical retaining wall. The gravity retaining wall is a very heavy wall that can have these two shapes, for example, this uh, trapezoidal shape. So it's retaining the soil from this side and lower level in, on the other side. So the soil will add some pressure on the abutment here, or sorry, in the, on the retaining wall here in this direction. Sorry, the, there is a problem in the laptop. Okay, so this is the air pressure, and another case is this case as well. So it can have this two steps to make it stronger and to add more weights here. So in this case as well, we have air pressure on the wall and the gravity walls can be from masonry. So masonry retaining wall, as you can see here, this is an example of the masonry walls. And it can be Uh, from uh, rocks, so we can add some rocks and uh, like compact them together. As you can see here in this image, so we add the rocks together, and this this rocks works as a retaining wall, so you can retain the soil behind here and other side so the pressure or the soil pressure will be something like that this type of walls is called gabion gravity walls and another type is called crepe gravity wall from concrete or timber so as you can see they can make this pattern of wall and put it near the soil so this uh, wall will retain the soil behind and again just a, this is the height of retained soil and this is the soil pressure on the wall okay so these are few types of soil uh, of retaining walls or gravity retaining wall and how they are uh, looking and how is the pressure acting on them The second type is called the cantilever retaining wall. As you can see here, what is the difference between gravity and cantilever retaining wall? This leg. So this leg was added to the retaining wall. Okay. What is the idea behind adding this leg? So if we go back again to the soil, to the, the gravity retaining wall, how the retaining wall, the gravity retaining wall works? The idea behind the retaining wall is we have the soil is pushing the the wall to the side, so it creates some moments on the wall. So this is moment from soil. And the idea of retaining wall, of gravity retaining wall, is that the retaining wall is very heavy. So, it add, this is the weight of the soil, uh, of the wall, sorry. So, the idea is we have a very heavy wall, and this is the weight of the wall. So, this weight is causing a moment in the reversal direction. So, it's causing this green moment. So the green moment is moment from the wall weight. Okay, so what happened now? The green moment is resisting the moment from the soil. So we have two moment. Yeah. 
resisting moment. Should I just change the color? So we have the resisting moment. Resisting moment is the green one. And we have the soil moment or the overturning moment, the, the blue one. Okay, so the idea behind the gravity wall is the resisting moment, moment more than the soil uh, moment, so that the wall is stable and safe. Okay, so the idea behind the returning wall is the wall has heavy weight, so that it can produce moment larger than the moment from the soil. Okay, but what is the difference in the retaining wall with cantilever? The idea here is we reduce the weight or the size of the wall, but we add a leg to the wall. Okay, so what happened here? So same thing, we still have like pressure from the soil acting here so we have the pressure and this pressure is causing the moment on the wall so we have soil moment soil from moment here we still have weight similar to the previous uh, slide weight of wall the weight of wall will cause moment in the other direction. Again, same color like before. So we have this green. This green moment is the moment from wall weight. Okay. But what happened here? What we have add here? We have add another component of of soil weight so because when we bought this leg the leg is uh, carrying some soil on top of it so this weight this soil will have another weight so we have weight of soil on top of the leg this weight is also adding some moment green moment to the green moment so we have two components of the resisting moment so again the resisting moment will be more than the moment uh, from soil or the soil moment okay the the new here or the difference here is the resisting moment come from two component weight of wall plus weight of soil okay so if i draw it again just to clarify so this is our wall and this is our leg and this is the soil here and this is the soil here okay so what we add in this case is this uh, block of soil on top of the wall leg or wall cantilever has some weight. This is the weight of soil and we have the weight of the wall itself. Okay. So this two component is causing resisting moment in this direction. So these two component are trying to resist. This is the soil pressure. So it's trying to resist the moment of soil in this direction. Okay. So this is the idea behind the cantilever retaining wall and uh, and we further we will go through the details in the few in the next few slides. Okay, do you have any question, guys, about that?
no question okay so if you are if you look at the image on the right hand side same type of material same type of wall sorry it is uh, a retaining uh, like cantilever retaining wall and if you can see here so this would be the soil pressure and this part will be similar to the other one so we have to consider the soil weight here and we have the weight of the uh, of the of the wall and this two will cause moment in the direction and the pressure of the soil will cause moment in the other direction and again the resisting moment should be more than the soil moment okay if you have a uh, like a detail or a careful look here we have add some something below here to the wall so we have add this part what is this part uh, name and what it is doing this part is called shear key the idea behind this part is when you add this part to the to the wall this part will retain or will be under some pressure here okay and this part will cause some resisting moment because it will push the wall so it will try to rotate the the wall in the other direction so in this case with the key with the shear key we can we have added another component which is the pressure moment from the pressure on the shear key so the shear key will help in uh, like increasing the resisting moment of this wall okay so this is the cantilever retaining wall and the third type we have for retaining wall is called the embedded retaining walls or sheet by walls as you can see the embedded retaining wall means that we have two different level of soil and we have like embedded or pushed this part which is called sheet piles or can or can deliver uh, or embedded retaining wall sorry guys Thank you. Sorry for that. The software uh, crashed. Okay, so again, the third type we have uh, of retaining wall is the embedded retaining walls or sheet by walls. The idea behind sheet by walls is we have two, again, two levels of soil. And we have the sheet by so we can embed it in the easily in the soil because this is like thin sheet bile so it can be easily embedded in the soil okay if you look here to this side the this uh, diagram here so this is the sheet bile wall so they can like they uh, like uh, embed uh, sheet piles close to each other so that they can create a wall. And as you can see here, so then they fill the soil in the two sides. And this this is our wall. So this is a soil leg. Okay, and the other side as well. Okay. So this is our sheet bile walls. 
there are some links of the sheet pile driving and some construction issues in sheet piles so you can also check the links and watch the videos okay here this depth like in the in the lower level is called embedded lens of the sheet pile this is a, a fact a big factor in the stability of the of the sheet pile okay because what are the idea behind the sheet pile the idea behind the sheet pile is the soil from this side the, the right hand side is trying to push here yeah. so if the soil pushing the wall this means the soil in active case but here what will happen the pressure in this side or the direction is in this side it will be passive okay i mean for the right hand side for the right hand side this the top soil want to push here so this might be the movement of the sheet pile. Okay, so the top part, for example, up to the rotation point somewhere here. Yeah. So the top part will be under active pressure case. The bottom part will be under passive pressure case. Okay, and to be stable, the active case should be balanced with the passive case. So this is the idea behind the sheet pile wall or the embedded retaining wall. Okay, in some cases, we have a, like a special type of embedded walls, which is called anchor tie back. So we can have sheet piles can deliver only without a tie back or without anchor tie back. So in some cases, we don't have enough uh, driven uh, depths of the embedded depths. So the embedded depths is limited or small. So the, the passive pressure from this side will be very low compared to the active pressure from this side. Okay, so what we need to do is adding this tie and this anchor. Okay, so we have anchor and tie and this will be connected to the wall from this side, for example. Okay, so this tie will help or will increase Oh, sorry, just you can call it reduce the active pressure So if the tie reduce the active pressure So this will help the passive to uh, balance with the active pressure. Okay, so in some cases we can have embedded wall with anchor tie back. Okay, if you can, if you have a look here, so this is the anchor or, or the tie connection to the wall or to the sheet bar. So this is the sheet bile and this is the connection. So it is just like a look from this side. Okay, so these are the type of soils, oh, sorry, type of retaining wall we have. So again, we have gravity retaining wall, cantilever retaining wall, embedded retaining wall or sheet by walls can deliver only 
and you can have embedded listening room with anchor or uh, tie back if we don't have enough embedded depth. Okay, so now we look at the gravity retaining walls. Uh, what are the forces acting on it? And what are the forces acting on the retaining wall to know the failure mechanism of all of the walls? Okay, because when you design a wall or design a structure, you need to know if it fails, how it would fail. So now we are looking at the forces acting on the gravity retaining wall. As you can see, here is our gravity retaining wall. And this is the soil block or retained soil. Okay. And on top of that, we have some applied pressure on surface or pressure on soil okay so what we have here the soil will cause lateral pressure on the wall so this is the important component of pressure so this is the lateral pairs Pressure. And for your information, what are the maximum value of pressure? The maximum value of pressure will be if the soil has density gamma and the soil layer height is H soil. So this pressure will be gamma soil times H soil. Okay, just for your information. So we have this earth pressure in red. Or in black, and we have the weight of the the weight of the wall or self weight of wall. Okay, and we have here this point is called the toe, and this point is called the heel. So, what are the forces on the on the uh, retaining, gravity retaining goal, we have the lateral pressure and the self weight of soil. So what, what happened to the retaining goal? What happened is, the lateral earth pressure is pushing the wall. This is one of the things we can have and also can make overturning and the wall itself can bear. So, if we go back here, so what happened to the wall? The first thing, is the wall is pushed or sliding. So due to the lateral pressure, the wall could move or slide. So for example, we come here. So this is called sliding of the wall. So our first problem we can have is the sliding. What will resist the sliding? The resistance of the sliding will be from the friction of the wall to the soil. So we have a force acting between the wall and the soil, which is called friction. So the friction is against the sliding. So to resist the sliding, you have resisted by the wall friction with the sun. Okay, so this is also one of the importance of the heavy weight of, of the wall, because when the wall, the self weight of wall is high, the friction also is high. Okay. So this is the first expected uh, movement of the soil, of the wall. The second movement, expected movement, is rotation of the wall or overturning of the wall. So 
this could happen as well. So due to the air suppression, the wall could overturn or overturning of the sun. Overturning of the wall. Okay, the overturning point will be our two here. So our two here is our overturning point. Okay, what will resist the overturning? The resisting of the overturning will be the weight of the wall itself. So the overturning is resisted by the weight of the wall. Okay, so this is just uh, indication about or justification about what happening to the to the gravity retaining wall here for the cantilever retaining wall what are the forces happening on the uh, cantilever retaining wall so the soil we have is again we have this is our soil this is our cantilever retaining wall So this is the lateral air pressure, the red one here. So we have lateral air pressure, and we have weight of the weight of the wall itself. And what is this component is, if you remember, we have mentioned that the weight of the soil on the leg. will be added to the wall so that uh, it will help the wall to uh, resist the overturning moment. So we have these two forces, self-weight of soil and wall. What else we have here? We have lateral air pressure from the other side. So lateral air pressure from the other side or passive air pressure. And what else we have again because the soil trying to move, so we will have friction of the soil. So similar to retaining gravity retaining wall, but we have just added this new component here. Okay, so these are the forces on gravity wall and cantilever wall. Now we go to just uh, more uh, explanation of the failure mechanism of the retaining wall because we need to know the failure mechanism for these two types. So the failure mechanism, we have three failure mechanisms for the gravity wall and the cantilever wall. The first filler mechanism is sliding. So as I mentioned earlier, we have the lateral air pressure. The lateral air pressure trying to push the wall. So the wall will slide in this direction. Okay, so for example, this was the original wall so the wall has been moved so we have also the weight self weight of the wall the self weight of wall due to the heavy weight so we will have a friction force in this direction so the friction force will be in the opposite direction of the sliding force. So if the wall sliding in this direction, the friction will be on the other side. So to be under stable, so the resultant force should be more than the friction. So the sliding 
if the sliding is more than the friction, what should happen? Do you have any idea what happened if the sliding force more than the friction force? Failure will happen, will occur. Because we are just talking about failure mechanism. So the failure mechanism happen when the resultant uh, more than the friction. So when we design, we should make sure that the friction is more than sliding force. Otherwise, the wall will fail. So this is the first failure mode. The second failure mode is the overturning. Again, we have the air pressure. The air pressure might be able to overturn the wall in this direction. So overturning moment. And it will rotate around about the, the top. So the wall was overturned by the air pressure. So what will resist that again? The resistance to this moment will come from the self weight of the wall because the self weight of the wall will cause a moment in this direction so this is the resisting moment so the filler mode will happen when if the upper turning moment more than the resisting moment just means that failure will okay okay so again when we design the wall we should have the resisting moment should be more than the upper turning moment. Okay. What is the last filler mechanism we have? The last filler mechanism we have for this type of soils, it can happen only in the gravity retaining walls. So if you have a look here, filler mechanism one and two are happening in gravity and cantilever retaining wall. But the third mechanism happen only on the gravity retaining wall. So what is the filler mechanism number four? Bearing. What means by bearing? Bearing means the ability of soil to sustain the weight on top of it okay so in this case because the, again the wall is very heavy the soil underneath here is weak cannot carry the soil so cannot carry the the wall so what happened here underneath so the wall or the soil settle so if the soil settles this means failure of the wall okay so here we have stress If the stress is under the wall more than the bearing capacity of soil, this will lead to failure. 
okay so when we design we should make sure that bearing capacity is more than the stresses under the wall okay so these are the three failure mechanisms of the gravity and cantilever retaining wall here is just a few details about the embedded retaining wall as i mentioned it is our embedded retaining wall so we will have active air pressure on top part so this is active case and we will have passive air pressure on the bottom part so if we look at the wall here as you can see there will be a rotation point because the soil here trying to push actively and the soil here try to push passively so if we look and don't forget that we have soil here and we have soil here So above the rotation point, what happened above the rotation point? We have this triangle of active pressure. So up to the point here, this bar is under active pressure. Okay, and the bottom bar, is under passive pressure so this is the soil from the right hand side from the left hand side we have the wall is pushing this this top part so if you have a look here so this part the soil is pushing sorry the wall is moving moving towards the the soil so when the wall moves towards the soil, this indicates that we have a passive case. When the soil moves towards the wall, this indicates active case. So here the wall moved towards the soil. So we have passive case up to the rotation, the rotating point. So passive case. Okay. And here, if you can see the soil moves towards the wall. So we have active bridge so this is the bridge on the embedded wall it is a bit complicated but this is how uh, how the soil movement affects the active and passive air pressure we don't need to like uh, do any calculation about that we just need to understand maybe the types of bridge that could happen on the embedded wall Okay, do you have any question, Dylan or Dinoka? Thank you. And these are the failure modes. So, this case. So in this case, we have the forces 
bad thing on the embedded wall. And in this slide, we will be looking at the filler mode. The first filler mode we have is active filler mode. As you can see here, what happened to the wall? The active pressure was higher than the passive. Higher than the passive pressure to lead to active failure. Okay, the second mode of failure is called global failure. So as you can see, all the wall has moved here. The soil still, the wall is still rotating about the rotation point, but just the active pressure was high very high so that it go in this direction but here as you can see the whole wall moved due to global failure so the global failure happened when the this soil the pressure of this soil is too high so that it even push the bottom side the bottom part of the wall here so that all the wall moves. Okay. So this mode is called global failure. Now we look at the second type of uh, embedded wall. Embedded wall. So we have the force acting on it. What is the force acting on the embedded wall with tie? So again, here is the wall. And we have the tie and the anchor. So what is the forces we have? <clears throat> We have active pressure similar to the normal embedded wall or the embedded wall without time, active pressure. And we have <clears throat> we have passive pressure. And again, because the embedded embedded this is not enough so that we have the atoy and anchor okay so what is the force in the anchor the force in the anchor will be tension force in this direction tie back force so this tie back force as you can see is in the direction of the passive force so we have tie back force plus the passive pressure should be equal or higher than the active pressure just to make the wall stable okay so that no uh, no active failure or no global failure will happen to this uh, wall Okay, so these are the forces we have, and here is the failure mode of the tieback anchor wall or embedded wall with anchor.
So as you can see here, this is a filler mode. The wall will rotate around the tie back force or tie back so that the wall will be moving down here in this direction. Okay, so due to the higher force and the tie back, the the wall will rotate in on this direction in this direction. So if we have a look on the pressure at failure, so when the wall move in this direction, so we have above the rotation point, this is rotation point, rotation point. Okay, so due to the presence of the tie back force here, we have tie back force. The pressure has changed. So when the <clears throat> the wall move here towards the soil, so this is a passive case. So we have a passive case on top here. So the soil here will cause <clears throat> passive pressure, and underneath this line so the the soil moved towards the wall so we have active pressure in this case so this is for the soil on the right hand side for the soil on the left hand side we have Sorry guys, the uh, software crashed again. So again, we have just to, to uh, explain the active and the pressure case now here. So this is our rotation point. Here in this direction. And in this case of the tie back, we have the force on the tie back here, this direction. So for the left side, soil so for the right hand side soil here the wall the wall moved towards the soil so the pressure will be passive so we have passive pressure on the wall here and under the rotation point the soil moved towards the wall so we have active pressure in the bottom part here so we have active pressure in this side okay for the left hand side below the point rotation point we don't have soil here no soil the soil just starts from this line here right so from this point here the soil moved towards the wall or the wall moved towards the soil the wall moved towards the soil so we have passive air pressure in this case so the soil moved towards this, uh, the, the wall moved towards the soil so we have passive pressure here okay so this is how to uh, understand or how to know the pressure on the on the wall and soil at the failure mode of the embedded wall with anchors okay and the fourth type of soil we just know briefly about it the reinforced retaining wall structure so the reinforced retaining wall structure is a retaining wall but we just add some reinforcement behind and then we put the soil, similar to here. If you can see here, there is some reinforcement of soil. 
and then they fell behind the wall with soil. Okay, so they just add some reinforcement to the soil to make it stronger and enhance the stability of the wall. Okay, now the last part of our uh, topic about the retaining wall is the influence of water for all wall types. If we have a look at these two conditions, so now we are influence of water. This is also one of the important question in the it might be in the exam. So if I ask you what is the influence of water for all type of walls or for walls, so we have two conditions. This is the water level. If you can see here, this is the water level, and here is the water level. What is the difference between the two cases? The difference between the two cases is here we have in case A, water from left and right. We have water from left and right. Here we have water from right and, sorry, from right only. Okay, so in this case, there is no water in this side. So what is the difference in these two cases in terms of pressure? So in condition A, we will have from the right hand side, we have air pressure, the blue one, air pressure. And we have the water pressure. So we have water pressure from the right hand side. We have also a water pressure from left hand side. So we have water pressure right and water pressure left. So what happened to the two water pressure? The two water pressure cancel each other. So this means that the final the final pressure here on the wall is only the soil. Right. So this for case A. <clears throat> what about case B? <clears throat> for case B, <clears throat> we will have the air separation. <clears throat> and we have also the water pressure. So here there is no water pressure on the right, left hand side to cancel the water pressure. So on this wall, we have both air pressure and water pressure. And if we draw like an the final pressure on the wall. So we will have something like like this. So if I ask you which case of A or B is more critical? Tinoka, do you have any idea? Or uh, Dylan? Yes, B is more critical.
is B is more critical because we have air pressure and water pressure. Right, so this case is more critical. Okay, this might be an, uh, a, a question in the final exam to know what is the influence of the water if it comes only from one side or if it comes from both sides. Okay, and now just quickly explain what happened due to water on the soil. If you remember, we in the earlier uh, lectures we have a formula of the effective pressure equal to the pressure minus the water pressure. So the effective pressure on soil equal to the soil pressure minus water pressure. Okay, so what happened to when water pressure increased? The effective pressure decreased. Okay, so when we have this is uh, like information we learned earlier. So when we have water pressure, the effective unit weight of the soil reduce. So again, also if we have pressure, soil uh, like uh, water pressure, the effective unit weight of the soil reduce, like this one. The effective, sorry. As if you remember as well, we have gamma soil. So gamma soil is the unit weight. So when we have water, gamma soil decrease. Okay, the second or the important thing we need to know is that also the effective vertical stress decrease. So this is here. When the water pressure increase, the effective vertical stress sigma dash decrease or sigma prime decrease. So and also the effective lateral stress sigma prime horizontal equal to Ka sigma V also decrease. So just ignore this one now. So what happened when the vertical pressure uh, decrease? Also the lateral earth pressure decrease because there is a relation between the vertical stress and horizontal stress. So this is what is meant here. So the effective pressure, lateral pressure also decrease. This means that when we have soil, the soil pressure itself decreases. But is this a good news for us? When the lateral pressure, lateral earth pressure decrease, is it a good news? Is not a good news. Why it is not a good news for us? Do you know why it is a good news? It is not a good news because we have water pressure instead. Because when you have water, so you will have water pressure. So even if the soil pressure decrease, but the water pressure will increase. So it doesn't affect much. Okay, this means that the wall has to face pressure from both soil and water. So this is the important thing we need to know. We will have water and air separation. Okay, and here is again, we have soil pressure.
and water pressure. Okay. Do you have any question, guys? And finally, how we reduce water behind the wall to reduce the water pressure. Okay, so how to reduce the water pressure? There is something called or some system of drains, filters, and weep holes. So for example, if you can see here, is this our retaining wall? So they create some weep holes in the wall itself. And then just behind the wall, they make a drainage system from granular zone or geofabric drain. So this is our drainage system. Okay, this area will like collect the water here. Yeah. Water will go to this uh, area, and this the water will flow into the weep holes, so that the water will drain, and uh, and uh, the soil here is dry. Okay, so just to make the soil dry and reduce the water pressure, we add this granular zone or geofabric drain behind the wall and then the water will flow through the weep holes here as well another uh, same system but you can make it inclined so also the water will go to this uh, drainage system and then the water will flow through the weep holes outside of the retaining wall. Okay, do you have any question, guys, for that? Very good. Okay, so the next topic will be ground problems. And I think we don't have enough time for today. So we'll we'll do it uh, later. Do you have any question, guys, for this week? Have you do you have any question regarding the assignment? Have you completed the assignment or not yet? The substructure assignment. No. We still have at least two weeks or and one week for revision because we st we have one uh, public holiday, so that's why you are shifted for one week. Thank you. Uh, do you have any other question uh, regarding the assignment? All good. Okay, guys, thank you. Thank you for attending today and see you next week. Thank you.